we've agreed that you'll try to race in a few weeks. I think in mid-February, uh, try to get a 3K. I think you have to get out there and test yourself at some point. <laughs> Whether I do training for other people, and I just want to say yes, I do. I train, I train some some young guys actually, and some all the way up to the masters. So I'm pretty well covering. Guys, what is going on? A quick intro today. Before I say anything more, I am doing a Q and A video. Um, I think it's been a while since you guys have really had a chance to ask specific questions, so comment down below right now good questions to ask me about literally any part of my life, about my friends, uh, my former contract, um, what I'm currently doing, the shoes I like to wear, all that crap. It can be personal, can be about running, anything you guys want, just ask good questions and I'll answer them in my next video. We're heading to the track right now, another solo workout for me, I'm doing 8 by 800 90 second rest, start at 225, work down a little bit, just see how we feel. Should be pretty comfortable, but excited for this one. Keith has been requested by the audience to talk a little bit again about, you know, just the update with the training, what's going on, so you're gonna hear him talking in the background today. Stick around to the end of the video, there's some exciting news as well, so with that, we'll see you guys at the track, and hopefully you enjoy some insight from Coach Keith. Welcome to the track. Got these headphones on. About to listen to Icon by Jaden Smith. Uh, absolutely love my Garmin watch. I've got the 945. You can connect it to your AirPods or if you have any sort of Bluetooth. Um, so I literally can listen to music hands-free when I'm warming up or when I'm running or doing a workout or whatever. So I'm gonna warm up right now with these. But yeah, just huge shout out to Garmin for being such an awesome sponsor and hoping we can keep this thing going for a while. See you guys after the warm up. Hey Spence, checking in to see how you're doing this week. You know, I've pretty much taken out the uh, the longer uh, tempo runs for a while because I think there's just, at some point, we're getting diminishing returns on that type of training. And I think, look, we've done almost, almost four months of training and I think that's probably overdue and that's why uh, I think you were getting flat and we took off the time, which I think is good. Uh, also, I think that, again, as I just said, I think there's diminishing returns at some point on, on keeping in the same training regimen. So I've moved it over a lot to, to this, this shorter, faster stuff, which as we know, is not very fast, but I just don't want your legs to go into shock doing this kind of stuff. So we'll see, uh, you know, how you respond to these 600s and 800s that are, that are getting you, you know, under 70 seconds uh, in the uh, quarters on these things. Anyway, uh, a, a few points I did want to make. One is, as you noticed, uh, I've asked you to do a couple 200s for your warm ups. I think it's really important to try to uh, get very warm on these workouts before you start them, you know, for the obvious reasons, just to make sure your legs are okay, but also psychologically. So when you get in there, you're not feeling there's any stress on your body on that first uh, one or two intervals. You know, typically, you know, we do a few uh, strides and, you know, you do a few and you feel okay, you think, but you don't really know until you you get into a little longer distance. So I think it's better to do a couple 200s because it really, it simulates a little bit more of what the start's like and gets your heart really beating and uh, that's good. Uh, so do those before, you know, take your, you know, rest, stretch after those. Uh, it's not, it's not a part of the workout, it's a part of the warm up. So once, uh, once you get started, I think you're at least going to get through the first couple feeling pretty, you know, that they're not that hard. And you know, I've, I've always thought that uh, when you start these interval workouts that you don't put a stress on yourself to really clock a super time on the first one. In fact, I'm fine if you're a couple seconds back on those just because I'd rather see you to work down, not go the other direction. So as you know, you're always finding your pace at the first few 
it, if you've warmed up sufficiently, you can really, you know, bang them and then you'll be fine on your way. Now, the other thing, uh, and again, we've talked about this too, is, uh, you know, there are those workouts that you hit every once in a while where, where you just simply don't have it. Uh, which I which I know was happening when uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, before you took your break uh, right near the end there where you just sort of went off the rails and you know that's that's not uncommon I think a lot of a lot of kids uh, you know and and even you know older runners think oh my god it's a disaster you know something's happened to me you know it happens to the best of runners I've talked to guys who are Olympic runners and I've asked them pointedly, I said, do you ever get into a workout and you say, oh my God, I can't get through it. They said, absolutely. You know, where you just turn to your coach and you say, hey coach, don't have it today. I just simply, whatever it is, is not there. You know, it's accumulation of overtraining perhaps. It could be you got a little uh, sickness, whatever. But those are the days, you know, you just gotta shrug it off and you know, say, okay, it's not for me today. You know, there's no point of pounding yourself into the ground that day running at crappy times and uh, walking away feeling miserable about the whole the whole process. And there, there's also those workouts which you don't quite make it through, but you, but you do a pretty darn good job. Those to me are the ones that are really the workouts. Those hard workouts that you don't feel good are the ones that really translate into making you a better runner. You know, I, I know we love it when we get those workouts where you can breeze, but those those are few, you know, those those aren't the real world. You know, a race is tough. And uh, that segues into the next thing I want to talk about, which is the race you're gonna, uh, you've agreed that you'll try to race in a few weeks. I think in mid-February, uh, try to get a 3K. And uh, again, I think you have to get out there and test yourself at some point. And, and again, we both agree on this that you know, sooner or later, you gotta go get there. You're never, you're never trained enough when you step on the starting line. It's, it's just the way of life in, in running. You always have those thoughts. I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. So, let's get started in a few weeks. If we can, if we can get you into a race, we're gonna try to do it. See what you can do in a 3K to get some sort of track, something down on paper and uh, and real as to where where your training is going, and then. Uh, from there, we may run another one or so, or then maybe we'll start jumping down to the mile a little bit more. So I'm excited for this type of training. I think it's 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 this is is truly your sweet spot. I, I know you like this type of training, so I, I know the other's been more of a drag and it's tough mentally on you. This this I think you'll have a lot more fun with, which is great. Um, the other thing is I did back off the tempo runs for a couple of weeks. I know it looks a little odd to just be looking at. These 800, four and 400s, 400s are a breeze. Uh, I think you got like 16 of them next week on Tuesday or so for your third, you know, the third workout on this this uh, this one we're running through. And I think uh, you'll you'll be fine. So I wouldn't worry about dropping the tempo out for two weeks. We'll work some heavier stuff back in there, but for the time being, I wanted to see where we can go with this type of stuff. To, and I think you'll find that when we flip back over to like longer repeat miles, everything will start to come down a little bit because we've gotten sort of reacclimated to, to running faster. Dude, you look great. Maybe we were born this way. Come on, looking great. Nice. <laughs> you could tell on the sound grab, I was looking tight, kind of like uncomfortable, panicky. So I focused as hard as I could the last rep, not on the time or the pace, but just letting my arms go, letting my legs not tighten up and get tight in the shoulders. And it felt way better. It's like this really uncomfortable feeling to let go of the stress. First time I've done it maybe ever, but like, you're basically like super tense and you think that letting go of the tenseness is gonna like make you feel worse, but it actually makes you feel better. Okay guys, time for cool down. Make sure to follow me on Strava for the daily post. The link is always down below. Uh, another really solid workout. Like I said, I'm really excited about being able to have just relaxed on that last rep to hit 215. Uh, feeling like I had another gear. Thank you guys for watching so much.
We'll see you the next one. Remember, Q&A, ask questions. See you soon. Oh, Spence, last point. Uh, I know we talked to also about uh, maybe doing training, uh, that you would have people who had made inquiries to you about uh, whether I do training for other people, and I just wanted to say, yes, I do. I train I train some, some young guys, actually, and some all the way up to the masters, so I'm pretty well covering uh, a wide range of... Uh, of uh, distances and ages. If you have uh, people who are talking to you, you can forward uh, info to me about that or uh, we'll sort it out one way or the other if, if people are uh, really interested in training regiments. So happy and